from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Friday, January the 7th, 2022. All countries that were designated red by Israel, barring travel to and from them, have now been removed from that no-fly list. And Israel will open two fully vaccinated tourists from those countries, which include the United States, this Sunday. The travel bans were in an effort to curb the spread of the Omicron variant of the coronavirus, but Israel's health minister, Nachman Ash, said earlier this week that the variant was already widely spread in Israel and that only a small percentage of the cases had come from abroad. At the same time, he stressed that the ministry continues to recommend avoiding unnecessary flights. Over 120 members of the entertainment industry signed a letter in support of the Sydney Festival and against calls to boycott it. As we reported to you earlier this week, some 30 acts withdrew from the cultural festival happening in Australia to protest one of the acts, Decadance, a dance performance based on a work by renowned Israeli choreographer Ohad Naharin and Tel Aviv's Batsheba Dance Company, being funded by a grant from the Israeli embassy with BDS activists accusing Israel of apartheid. The show was performed yesterday at the Sydney Opera House as scheduled. Also yesterday, the nonprofit Creative Community for Peace released an open letter rejecting the cultural boycott of Israel, calling it an affront to both Palestinians and Israelis who are working to advance peace through compromise, exchange, and mutual recognition. Among the Jewish artists who signed the letter, KISS frontman Gene Simmons, comedian Elon Gold, rapper Kosha Dills, and filmmaker Nancy Spielberg. Director of the CCP, Ari Engel, said the organizers of the Sydney Festival boycott intentionally misrepresent the truth about Israel and make provocative statements to try and bully artists into backing out of the festival. Their actions, he said, only further hostility and dampen hope for peace, which all of us so urgently desire. The remains of an ancient synagogue were uncovered in Turkey. According to Turkish Jewish news outlet Avlaramaz, the synagogue was found under a house during excavations in Sidi, Antalya, and is thought to be the first sign of a Jewish community living in the area. The synagogue is said to date back to the 7th century, among the finds, the floor of the synagogue, which shows a plaque with Greek and Hebrew inscriptions. And in Italy, a Jewish museum will be built on the grounds that surround an ancient Jewish cemetery. The Jewish Cemetery of San Nicolo in Mantua in northern Italy was built in 1442 and is believed to contain the graves of at least two renowned Italian Kabbalist rabbis, Menachem Azaria Defano and Moshe Zacuto. During the Holocaust, the Nazis turned the surrounding area into a concentration camp. And after the war, the land went to the Italian military and an armory was constructed. Well, after years of negotiations, the armory will now be turned into a museum called the House of Remembrance, which will highlight the history of Jews in that region. The graveyard will be fenced off and not disturbed. The renovations are being funded by the Italian government and are expected to be completed in 2024. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS, for Friday, January the 7th, live Shabbat services are coming up from New York City's Central Synagogue at 6 o'clock, followed by Shabbat services from the Hampton Synagogue. At 8.30, internationally acclaimed singer Neshama Karlbach will be in concert. At 9, it's the film Israel Inside. At 10, Israeli mentalist Lior Souchard performs. At 10.30, a replay of the Hampton services, followed by a replay from Central Synagogue. And coming up next, a look at this week's Torah portion. And that's the JBS News Update for Friday, January the 7th, 2022. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well, and Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>